Hello there everyone and welcome back to Let's 9 Day Pikmin. We're on the second day taking on the Forest of Hope. The first of three main areas in this game. And this is where the whole 9 day thing is actually going to be somewhat of an importance. The first day, like I said, was very limited in that you can only get one ship piece and 25 Pikmin. I never did mention the fact that you could only get 25 Pikmin maximum. You could just do it 20, but there's really no reason to not go for 25. So that was... I just never mentioned that. But right here, I'm doing a running throw. I very briefly mentioned that I did a running throw on the first day, but I cut it a, a little late, so I figured I'd save any kind of explanation for later. But the idea of it is you grab onto a Pikmin, like so, you throw it while running, that's it. It goes about twice as far, I think. I haven't done any calculations, but it goes a fair bit further. And you can you can do cool stuff with it. It's not really very useful, because you can only do it with one Pikmin at a time. And considering you will be running around 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 with up to 100 Pikmin at a time doing something that only takes one Pikmin at a time is not really going to help you but anyway speaking of one Pikmin that guy was inside the circle and the second time it didn't look like he was in the circle what the hell Pikmin I should not be clapping in Disappointment of Pikmin. No. Now right here I'm just taking on this spotted bull buff. Not really going to be a threat to me. You may be wondering how I'm throwing the Pikmin so fast. Really? There's no limit to how fast you can throw Pikmin. It's just a matter of the Pikmin being close enough for Olimar to grab them. And normally, the Pikmin will be standing in line and walking up to Olimar. Which is what controls the speed at which you throw but if you swarm them on top of Olimar then he can throw them really really fast but anyway while the Pikmin are taking down that wall Olimar is going on a little killing spree because Olimar can do that it's not very often that he gets to kill stuff on his own but I like doing that and this is a great opportunity to do so so yay and the big ones, the spotted bull bobs. It's really funny how he just can't attack Olimar. I took damage on the little one, the first one, but the big ones just can't touch me. I'd also like to mention that streak right there. Out of two Let's Plays I've seen of this game, they both mentioned this. That streak, but they haven't shown it off. And there's a good reason to not show it off, because, quite frankly, you want to kill the spotted bulbobs while they're asleep. And letting them get up is just a bad idea. They're going to kill a lot of your Pikmin. Just trust me on that. That is going to happen. Yeah. But in that situation I can do so because it's just Alima. Right here, if I were to let that one streak, I would pretty much be screwed. Because I don't have the Pikmin to take on a... Well, awake one of those. What is... What is the word for awake that would be the equivalent of sleeping? Oh, the opposite. I don't know. I can't think of it n right now. But anyway, I just activated the yellow onion. So the yellow Pikmin could get growing while I kill this guy. This, that's generally what this soul well generally just doing Pikmin in a few days is about getting as much stuff done at the same time as possible. You'll be seeing more of that later on. It's not very prevalent right here. But anyway, we got the yellow Pikmin. They have ears, for some reason. For some reason the red Pikmin have noses, the yellow one have ears, and the blue one have mouths. 
I'm not entirely sure what, why they have that. It doesn't really matter for anything. I guess it's a play on the whole. No, that doesn't even. Matter. No, never mind. They all have eyes. It's not a play on the monkey thing with the see no evil. Uh, it's nothing. It's just Pikmin being kind of random. But something funny about the yellow Pikmin. For completing this game, you only need 15. At no point in the game do you need more than 15 Pikmin. Now unfortunately for me, I am not a pro at this game, so I do lose a Pikmin, so it's a good thing that I accidentally get 17 rather than 15. I never bothered learning how much stuff I had to carry back here to get exactly 15. And really, it's a good thing, because otherwise I'd be screwed when one of them died. But hey, yellow Pikmin can pick up bombs. Yes, those are bomb trucks. The game describes them as peculiar stones, but they're bombs. They're gonna blow up. That is what bombs usually do. And that is very, very useful for speedrunning this game. And I hate to call this a speedrun, but I'm not entirely sure what else to call it. Now, this right here. I'm going to blow up this wall, and that's just something random I decided to try if I could do during this session. Really, it's kind of stupid that I would go out of my way to test something like this when I'm just trying to get this day over with the first place. But the idea is that when I come back here, I won't have to bring yellow Pikmin over to this area to blow it up. And that's, that's just something for the next day that I wanted to see if I could do. And then I ended up succeeding in this day. But because of that, I am in the predicament, yes, using fancy word, because I can. I need seven bombs, and in that other can, there was only six. So, I, I'm wasting a bit of time waiting for these Pikmin to pick up all the bombs. And it can, it can take quite a while for the Pikmin to realize that there's a bump nearby, so that's why I stand around for so long. A little longer than is really necessary, but hey, whatever. Now, right here, I'm actually smart. You'll see later on that I am really stupid. Not as stupid as those Pikmin for walking in my way and going back in my party group, whatever you want to call it, but still pretty stupid. I realized it later in this whole nine day run, but at this point I did, I had no idea. I'll explain it when, it, when I get to it, but hey. Now, this is a mechanic I haven't really talked about. It's a pretty well-known mechanic, but I'm not sure if people really realize how important it is. Flower pigment. Everyone knows that flower pigment are better than leaf pigment, but really, I never realized just how much better they are. They're just so much better. Because they carry stuff back a lot faster. And while playing this, I did notice that one bump pigment. I knew damn well that doing this could very well get a lot of my pigment blown up. But I was lucky and never threw the bump pigment, so yay. And I have to say something for this area. It is incredibly awkward to sort out your pigment, because there's stuff everywhere that your pigment will just interact with. Because of these clovers, I can't really see where I am in relation to my pigment. And I didn't want to use the whistle because the other pigment were too close, but... As you saw right there, I threw four pigment. Only two of them dropped their bumps. 
that is something that annoyed me quite a bit. And like I said, I figured out what the whole deal was. And also, Pikmin randomly attacking pellet posies. That is really annoying. I should also mention that because I woke up these guys a long time ago and then walked away, I'm pretty sure that AI just kind of stops working. They just stand there doing nothing. And then when I get close to them, the AI reactivates and they think, oh, it's been a long time since I saw that Olimar guy. I'm going to go back to sleep. Uh, yeah, that's... That's my way of thinking of it. And I should stop clapping. That is something I should do. Also, right here. I wanted to see if I had enough pigment to carry back that spotted bulbob. And of course, one pigment yeah. decided to go for the dwarf bulbob. One pigment decided to go for the wrong thing. Sometimes I am just so disappointed in my pigment. It's not even funny. But anyway, now that all of the other Pikmin are carrying stuff, I'm taking the bomb Pikmin over to blow up this wall. But before I do that, I'm going to show off the good old beeping you are low on health noise that is in every Nintendo game ever. Just listen to it. It is super obnoxious beep voice. Also, the timing on this... I love when the game does that. Just, you're in the middle of doing something, and then it returns the ship piece. Did I clap again? I did. That is kind of disorienting. But anyway, that whole thing with Bomb Pikmin running away. You'll notice that... You'll notice that about half of my Pikmin drop their bombs, and the rest of them don't. Is something in the timing of when the bombs are dropped? Like, if a pigment is standing next to a bomb as it is dropped on the ground, it will run away. But the timing when throwing pigment normally, the second pigment doesn't land until after the first pigment has dropped this bomb. At least that's what I think. So it doesn't get scared by it. But when throwing really quickly, they do. And right there, I even got to showcase the fact that you can stand in front of the dolphin, the spaceship, dolphin, to heal yourself, just like that. So really you don't have much of an excuse to die as Olimar. And I swear, Pikmin are really want to carry stuff back here. I don't know why. Normally Pikmin don't try to carry stuff unless you do the swarming thing into something. But with these sheer grabs, they do. It's really annoying. I also forgot to mention, and this is just because I'm not planning it out. Yet. No. It's because I'm stupid. I'm generally just stupid. No. But anyway, the sheer grabs right there, those purple and white things, you only have to wor worry about the purple ones because they are the only ones that can kill a pigment. The white ones are kind of just there. And because I waited so long to pick up these pigment, you get to see another mechanic of this game. All of those pigment are growing into flower pigment, which is pretty great. Like I said, flower pigment carry stuff a lot faster. So that is very, very important for getting stuff back to base really quickly. Which is obviously a very important part of a run like this. And at this point I'm just making sure that I have about 80 pigment for the next day. That being 80 red pigment. It's kind of important that they're all red. I don't really want to call count the yellow into that. Because, well, they don't have the immunity to fire that I desire from the reds. Let's just leave it at that. The red pi pigment are immune to fire, yes. In Pigment 2, the yellow pigment are immune to electricity, but in this game there's no electricity. 
So that's pretty much the reason they decided to make it so that only the yellow Pikmin could pick up bomb trucks. Because in pre-release pictures of this game, or at least, I don't know much about pre-release stuff. But there were indications of red Pikmin holding bombs, so it was something that all Pikmin could do. But then because they didn't implement electricity, it became something that only yellow Pikmin could do. And that's kinda funny. That's interesting to me, stuff like that. And that's another Bulbop dead. All of the Bulbops have been killed. Yes, glorious. All of the ones I need to kill on this day. There are two more spotted Bulbops and probably two more Dwarf Bulbops. But hey, who cares? Who cares? Who cares about that? What is important is that I am um, have I have messed around a bit too much on this day. I still have one more ship piece to get and it is getting very very close to the end of the day. So I actually end up on the, the very end of the countdown. Yeah spoilers. Like I care. And I don't know what's, what else to say about that other than it's pretty damn close. But I'm kind of feeling it at this point so I am leaving behind some of the unplugged Pikmin. And really I should have brought along some of those Pikmin just to get the ship piece back even faster. But hey, I manage. Really, I messed around a lot on this day. A lot of, a lot of valuable seconds wasted. But it all worked out and I didn't really feel like redoing a day that succeeded. In the grand scheme of things it succeeded, so why redo it? That's really all I have to say on that. If it works, why fix it? Don't fix what ain't broke, you know? So as much as I would love to do this bay, do this bay data, do this bay data. Yes, that is correct English. Totally. As much as I would have loved to do this day better, I really only care about getting it done. That is what is important. I don't want to create any illusion about me being a very good player. I don't. That is not the message I want to get across right here. I just want to show off a nice... I was going to say nine, but then I said nice. I'm losing it. It's a good thing it's the end of the day. This is just a nine day run. It is not a showcase of skills. It is not some mad speed run. It's casual. I'm having a good time playing it. Terrible time post commentating it because I am a dick to myself, but that's just the way it is. And success! I managed to do it with a few seconds left, and everything is jolly. Jolly good. Day is over, I got all the ship pieces I needed, and the next day is a tad more impressive. At least I think. This day was a mess between bombing that other wall and just the one Pikmin all the time. Well, not all the time. Didn't happen that much. Whatever. For the luck work here. I just want to pause the video right here and say, no matter what you do, Alema is going to say that. If I can just recover the parts of my radar, even if you get the whimsical radar like I did, you can see I had a minimap, or rather a map, that I could put get up, put up on screen. Alimai will say that no matter what. And because I've discovered yellow pigment and bomb rocks, Alimai is way behind on these journals already. It is kind of funny. But anyway, keep playing, and 
I sprouted a lot more pigment than I needed to. But whatever. We have unlocked a new area where we will be going in the next one. See you then.